I'm honored that you uh, are attending my session. Uh, this is called Navigate All the Knowledge. And uh, my name is Jim Weaver, James Weaver. And um, there's my Twitter, there's all my coordinates. I work for Pivotal. And um, I'll be demonstrating an app that I created as a developer evangelist to showcase some of Pivotal's technology, technologies that we curate, like Java Spring and um, Cloud Foundry, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, which are both open source. Um, I've written several Java books. Uh, I've been a Java advocate for many years. And uh, this app is live at conceptmap.io. You could actually um, hit it from an iPad or, or your uh, uh, computers and, and play along with me. It's all open source. Uh, it's in GitHub um, at uh, there. And then also this technical, this getting started presentation, the one that I'm doing is um, you can just hit the question mark in the app. Here's the app. You hit that question mark and you'll get to uh, a link for this. So first of all, uh, if I had to give you a thumbnail of what this talk is about, it's, it's um, the fusion of Wikipedia and Wikidata. Wikidata is a sister project to Wikipedia. Uh, Wikimedia, uh, which is the umbrella organization, uh, as you probably already know, has a lot of projects. The most famous is Wikipedia. There's Wikipedia Commons, which has all the media assets. There's also Wikidata, which has all the structural information. It's what uh, graph geeks like you and me really get off on because all of the Wikidata or Wikipedia articles are related to each other um, through different relationships, uh, some, some odd 2,000 odd relationships, and it's all right there uh, behind an API. And uh, so the big idea then was to be able to, um, to be able to fuse those. So for example here, uh, Here's the universe, and uh, there's a has part relationship with a, a u observable universe and other um, uh, relationships between Wikipedia articles that we can then exploit. So the big idea then is uh, to be able to navigate Wikipedia articles, not only through the links in the articles, but also through the Wikidata structural relationships, and then to be able to pin those as I navigate those uh, into a concept map. So it's at conceptmap.io. So it's designed to facil facilitate learning. So I can do some self-learning kinds of things. Or maybe I'm a teacher, either an informal or maybe a, you know, a, a, a licensed teacher. And I want to put together a concept map for my <coughs> students so they can understand the domain. Um, so I can give them this domain of knowledge. And then they can click these different uh, uh, nodes in the concept map that I've given them. Or maybe I want to use it for research. So I've got a, a quick scenario I'd like to show you uh, um, in the learning teaching kind of idea. So maybe, you know, this is a graph uh, database kind of um, event. And so I'm just going to uh, type in graph database. And the Wikipedia article for graph database comes up. I'll pin that item. And then I can start uh, looking through perhaps the Wikipedia side of this, I'll click database. And then I'll notice that the Wikidata and the, the, the item ID comes up for Wikidata. I can pin that. And in, the, in Wikidata, there's a relationship that graph database is a subclass of database. And so then I can further, uh, for example, I see that there's a, um, if I look at uh, graph database, there's a based on relationship based on graph theory. So I'll click that, and I can see the Wikipedia article. I'll go ahead and pin that. And so now I'm building this concept map. So graph theory um, is part of, um, uh, so, uh, part of um, a couple of disciplines. One is um, mathematics, and one is computer science. So to get that, I just hit this x1, which means expand items to one level, which is a breadth first search. Um, to one level. And so then that pulls these up and shows their relationships. So then maybe I want to go back to graph database and I see that, um, uh, I see that uh, there's relationships, but there's also reverse relationships from the perspective of a related item. So um, I can uh, expand instance and I can see that Neo4j is an instance of graph database. So I'm going to go ahead and click Neo4j. I'll pin that one. 
and maybe uh, go through the Neo4j article, and I can see that I have um, uh, Neo4j has uh, Cypher query language. I'll click that. I'll pin that. And uh, and so I'm building up this this uh, this concept map. Then I can share. So I've got a uh, graph database here. I'll, I'll go back there, and uh, we can see that um, we have uh, semantic queries. And I'll go ahead and pin that one. And then going back to graph database, I can see that then there's also uh, uses. I'll go ahead and get that relationship, so it uses graphs. And then also in the graph database article, there's, uh, it notes that uh, most graph databases are no SQL in nature. They store their data in key value stores. I'll go ahead and click that one. Now notice that when I click that one, it doesn't actually, it's not related to anything else, but that's okay for a concept map, not for, you know, to have articles that aren't necessarily all related to each other. Uh, they're, they're, they are part of the concept map that you want. Now let's say I want to share this concept map. Um, I'll go ahead and click the link icon, I'll, um, and that uh, generates a bit.ly link that then I'll copy. And then um, to simulate this, I'll go ahead and, and uh, paste it into a, a new browser. And then that shows the concept map. Then you can send it to share it to your students, Tweet it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and, and tweet that one. And uh, so let's see, this is a concept map that we just built in the Graph Connect section. And uh, so now I've tweeted that. So if you went to uh, uh, the Twitterverse and especially looked at uh, the Graph Connect hashtag, you'd be able to pull that up, the, the, the concept map that I just created. So that takes care of these slides. Now let's say that, let's say that um, you got here and you weren't convinced the key value database wasn't related to something else. Or maybe you see something wrong with some of these relationships. So you can click this Wikidata icon up here and that will take you to the Wikidata editor for that item. And since this is all open like Wikipedia is, Wikidata is as well, you can manage those relationships yourself. It, the community does that, right? The public does that. So if you see something awry, uh, you can add a relationship, delete it, whatever. So now I'd like to go on to uh, kind of an architectural view of this. We have a single page HTML5 app here, and then we have some, some uh, microservices running in the cloud grouped in four major categories. There are Wikidata services, Wikipedia services, some GraphDB services, which, which gets, um, is actually going to be um, proxied over to Neo4j DB, and then some short URL services, which is that bit.ly link. So, so these are edge services that are in the same domain as, um, as uh, we get the HTML5 app, so that way there's no cross-origin problems. And then also these kind of front end, these microservices, there are maybe 20 or so of them, they front end these, um, providing a lot of simplicity to them. Maybe these are more complicated. And, and so these are engineered just to give the application what, he, what it wants. Plus it provides location independence. So in a use case, and these slides are online, so I'm not going to go through all the details here, but just want to let you know that there we have different endpoints that are um, Th that are uh, the, actually the microservices themselves. And um, we have different endpoints. For example, if I search for Earth, it's going to be hitting each time I hit a key, it's going to do an article search. Or when I do hit the enter, it's going to look up. If I, um, if I hit enter, it's going to take the name and uh, go to a Wikipedia API endpoint and look up its, its uh, Wikidata queue item and things like that. So when I, um, when I pin the items to the graph, uh, we use this graph, uh, the graph endpoint, giving it a list of items, the queue items the wiki, that are in Wikidata, and uh, sent that to the Neo4j endpoint, and then rendered the results. So the Neo4j cipher query then is a very simple query. It's, you know, match. Uh, on, a, on the labels A and B, um, 
uh, item labels A and B, where the item ID are in this list of um, this list of uh, items, and then B item ID is in the same list, and then we do an optional match, and then we return A, B, and collect R, E, L. And that way, we are returning the um, all of the nodes and the relationships for our concept map. Nothing, nothing more, nothing less. So then. Um, this is just a slide that shows um, how you can take Java and annotate it with spring annotations and very easily stand up a REST controller, a REST service. And so creating a microservice, a REST service, um, by then specifying um, the name of the endpoint, its parameters, and then returning it. And so it's very easy to do that with spring. The way that you represent the, the items that, are, that go over the wire is in uh, plain old Java objects, POJOs they're called. So here's a use case where we change language. I'll just go ahead and demonstrate this one, where I can change the language from, say, let's see, um, go to graph uh, database here. I'll change the language from uh, English to Chinese, let's say. So um, Wikidata has uh, the, for each um, Q item, for each article name, uh, it has one or more uh, language translations, right? One or, one, one or more entry based upon the Wikidata article. And so um, not only does it provide semantic structure, but it also provides the language, um, you know, the, the words or the, the language for the, the different labels. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, switch back to English. We've already gone through this use case, share link. And so I'd like to uh, demonstrate a breadth first search. I showed you a little bit about that, but I, I'm going to go ahead and, exp and show you an example of a breadth first search uh, that's maybe a, a little more meaty than that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and erase the graph that we have so far. And so maybe I'm doing some uh, research on, on bladder cancer and, and the genes and chromosomes and things that are involved in that. So I'm going to hit bladder cancer. Um, and then look uh, down in related items, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit the breadth first search to one level on genetic association, and that'll pull up that and then the genes that are associated with it. Now I'm going to click a gene, a PCSA gene, and, um, and then I'm going to uh, find the chromosome for that. So here's the chromosome, and then now that I've, uh, I'll pin that chromosome, now that I've got that chromosome, I'm going to do another breadth first search to infinite levels uh, on follows. So here, those are the chromosomes that follows, and these are the chromosomes that are followed by. And so now we can now we can see uh, what genes are what for what chromosomes. So that's an, that's just another use case. Um, another use case is items in common. So for example, let's say that um, we have um, Lionel Messi. Whoops, Lionel Messi. So a soccer player. Uh, sorry, a footballer. <laughs> okay, so here's Lionel Messi. We're going to pin him. And then we're going to take uh, Ronaldo. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo. And uh, we'll go ahead and drop down this, and we'll get Cristiano Ronaldo. And I'm going to say, okay, what do um, Cristiano Ronaldo and... Lionel Messi have in common. So I've got Cristiano Ronaldo up here. I'm going to say in common and then click Lionel Messi. And so that's going to do a shortest path, all shortest path kind of search so to up to two hops. And then going to show us that uh, Lionel Messi, well, lots of things. They're both, uh, we're in the FIFA World Cup, 210 FIFA World Cup Association Football. They were both forwards, um, et cetera. So um, another, kind of, um, relation, another kind of operation we can do is, uh, well, for, first of all, there's the Neo4j cipher query for that. It's doing all shortest paths on the, uh, the two items that we pass in up to two hops. And then here's one that's navigate to root. Well, the Wikidata information is hierarchical in nature. It's kind of cool. Everything kind of boils up to this entity, but it's, uh, it, it's uh, related like that. So we're going to take... Um, We'll take uh, Cristiano Ronaldo here, and uh, we'll go ahead and do a root path, path to root. 
And you know, now it's going to show us that Christia actually is human uh, and uh, uh, subclass of person, subclass of subject, subclass of entity. And then uh, for my last, uh, or for, for a next my next trick, yes, is, um, is going to, uh, first of all, here's the cipher query for that. Uh, we're doing all shortest paths from the item that we selected up to entity. And then, but we're only going to get the ones that are um, subclass of, whole part, you know, part of, and uh, instance of. So um, we'll go ahead and trace our way to the root, up to entity, and so then that's the cipher query to do that. Um, and so then here's kind of a fun game that's uh, degrees of separation, like the Kevin Bacon game. So I thought uh, maybe, um, maybe I'd uh, do some audience participation here. So I'd like to either give me a footballer or a, or a, a, a famous actor or actress. Anybody, just shout it out. Eric Who? Eric? Help me spell it. <laughs> I've only got four minutes. Okay, so that's probably close enough, right? Okay, so that's one. So Eric is is Eric an actor? Okay, so give me a so give me a foot another footballer. Harry Kane. Oh, he plays. Okay, Harry Kane, not on the same team, right? Okay, is that it? You can tell I'm a footballer, right? All right, so okay, so here we go. Is that the person? Okay, so we're going to go down here to member of sports team and do a short, shortest path undirected between Herring Cade and uh, Eric Cantona. And then we're going to find out that those two are related through teams, like, kind of like Kevin Bacon through movies. And so we're going to see that Eric Cantona played for FC Barcelona with Gary Lineker, who you know, played with that other team, with Harry Kane. Um, and so that's, the, that's kind of this... Uh, degrees of separation uh, ability that it has. And so then one other thing I'd like to show you then, uh, besides the degrees of separation then, is just a quick use case here. How many people are actually from London here? How many keep up on their British royalty? So I was, uh, for, okay, so uh, for the fun of it, I thought, well, I'm gonna speak in London, right? So um, I'm gonna look up uh, some of the British royalty uh, uh, lineage, right? So I, I looked up, this is a true story. I looked up Prince Harry, and so I'm going to pin, pin Prince Harry there. And then I, I remembered, you know, I'm a Yank, right? I'm, I'm from the U.S., but um, so I looked up, I knew about Queen Victoria. So there's Queen Victoria. And I wanted to see her lineage. And so I'm going to, uh, you know, between, what's between Queen Victoria and Prince Harry? So I can do another shortest path kind of thing through child, but it's going to be a shortest path forward, not undirected, but forward. So I'll do this. So I'll clean Victoria, shortest path forward through child to Prince Harry. And so then there's the lineage. And so, um, you know, we, uh, we, well, there's, she's before Prince Harry, right? So there we go. Um, so there's Edward, and I noticed, you see these other, other things followed by, but I noticed that that, that stops at George the Fifth. Right, so where, who followed George V, right? So I decided to go ahead and do a, um, a follows by on, followed by on uh, George V, um, infinite here. Uh, and I found out that George V was actually followed by Edward IV, Edward VIII, right? And then George the sixth, and those were brothers, right? So it's like, well, what happened? Did he die? What happened? So I looked at the article. This is a true story. I, mean, I looked at the article. I wasn't trying to dig up dirt, but I found out, <laughs> I found out that he actually abdicated his throne because he married. He wanted to marry this Wallace Simpson, who was an American who had been who had been divorced twice, and so um, you know, just going through the article, I found out. And then uh, if we do a, a breath search, first search on a spouse, we see, okay, there are her two former husbands. I'm out of time. Thank you very much for all your attentiveness. <laughs>